Just under two months ago, the Nuggets and Celtics squared off for the first time this season, and that matchup didn't disappoint. It was a very back-and-forth game where both teams struggled from three, ultimately coming down to the final seconds where Jokic and Murray put it away to give Boston their first home loss of the season. Last night, we got matchup number two, this time in Denver, and you know how they say history tends to repeat itself? The Nuggets opened with a set action that starts Aaron Gordon with the ball in the pinch post as they set a couple cross screens for Porter Jr., and Mike slips down the middle of the lane for a real easy catch and finish. A little over a minute later, they set up another cross screen action, this time for Jokic out on the perimeter, and as he runs through, he actually draws two defenders away from the ball. That leaves KCP open as he draws a hard closeout and attacks for a wide open midi. Of course, they can also run Jokic off of screens with the ball in his hands, and if nobody's there to pick him up, he'll take advantage of that space, just abusing Chris Stapps on his way to a dunk. Usually, when he's out on the perimeter though, it's to set up that signature two-man game. Here, Jamal turns the corner to get to a floater, and it's the exact same thing when Reggie Jackson's in the game. He comes off a screen and you can see how hesitant Kristaps is to step away from Jokic's role, leaving a lane right to the basket. The key here is that Jokic and the Nuggets can attack in so many different ways. Of course, he can also set up in the post for an isolation, and as soon as a double comes, he's finding the open man to put the defense in rotation, which results in another open jumper. To avoid plays like that, you sort of have to throw single coverage at him, to which he'll counter by getting himself a bucket. He had 7 points and 5 assists on 67% shooting in the first, taking complete control of the game early on. And after watching them operate, it's a pretty jarring difference when you watch Boston's offense. Most of their approach stems from finding matchups to attack one-on-one. -on -one. Like here, Drew has Porter on him and uses his speed advantage to attack the rim and finish. This time it's Jalen Brown who attacks Porter in early offense, turning his back to the basket and getting to a little push shot with the left. Jalen was clearly feeling it right from the jump, and he loves to attack with speed. If the defense isn't fully back and set, good luck stopping him from touching the paint. When the game slows down, that's when they'll start going to more ball screen action through Jason Tatum. Denver plays the first one in a hedge, leaving Chris Dapps with some space in the short roll as he turns into a jumper. Then next time Tatum sets up a pick and roll, Jokic sits back in a drop, so he turns the corner and works his way to the middle for a jumper of his own. And on attempt number three, no hedge, no drop, but rather a soft switch, leaving him with some room to pull up from extended range. The bigger risk that comes with switching these actions though, is it creates those mismatches they want. On this one, Chris Stapps finds himself working against Reggie Jackson and takes him to the low post for an easy bucket. Then a possession later, same exact thing, except now a double comes, so he kicks it out to an open Al Horford who just comes up short on a top of the key triple. Unfortunately, that was part of the story early on. The Celtics shot just 3 of 11 from 3 in the first quarter and could have easily jumped out to a decent lead had one or two of those misses fallen. Still, both offenses cooked, and it was a 28-27 game in the final seconds before Jamal Murray did this to give Denver a lead at the buzzer. To start the second, the Nuggets threw out their switch everything unit, a bunch of athletic wings just flying all over the court to make life hell for the opposing offense. One problem with this lineup though is that it lacks size, which Jalen Brown took advantage of by relentlessly attacking the paint. You can see that here as he gets on the offensive glass, takes it to the rim and misses, only to get not one, but two opportunities at a tip-in before getting a third chance from Tillman as he uses a power dribble to get a grown man's bucket. This time you're going to see him operating out of the mid post, and without a big rim protector to turn him away, that's just way too easy. Then when he's out on the perimeter, and the Nuggets soft switch a ball screen to not give him a lane, that's when he'll pull up for an outside jumper. Jalen had 15 points in the second, and the team's offense was looking really good. Only one problem, Jamal Murray was matching everything on the other end. These non-Jokic minutes are what I like to call the let Jamal cook offense, and that's precisely how it went down. 
After those two buckets, he finds himself with a big switched onto him, attacks on a drive, and throws up a beautiful Statue of Liberty finish. Surprisingly, Denver actually won these minutes, and about halfway through, it was time for Jokic's return. Finally, the Celtics decided to try out some set action, with Drew setting up on an open side as Tatum sets a back screen for Porzingis to cut, but the Nuggets are able to shut it down. Then on the other end, they run a play of their own, with Jokic setting a flare screen for KCP, and as soon as Joker recognizes that the Celtics are switching, he slips back door for some easy offense down low. For the most part though, Boston played some really good defense during this stretch. Here's another set action, with Porter curling off a screen towards the ball, and Chris Dapps drops to protect the nail, while Horford smothers him at the basket. Most of their stops pretty much all came down to Chris Dapps' ability to protect the rim. Here he's defending Gordon in isolation, and does a good job of forcing him baseline into a tough angle. And this time it's Jokic in the post, actually leaving his feet on an upfake, but still getting a great contest thanks to a 7'6 wingspan. Then when the Nuggets switched up their approach by going to a high pick and roll, Chris Dapps was back in a deep drop coverage and stops Jamal from getting to the paint on a drive. This was the perfect opportunity for Boston to shift the momentum, except they couldn't score either. Of course, they're still trying to attack mismatches without much success though. Here, Chris Dapps gets ripped by Jamal, and this time you're going to see them use Tatum as a screener to hunt for the switch onto Murray before setting up to isolate. Jokic leaves his man on the perimeter to load up on the nail, and they force another turnover. On the very next possession, Tatum again finds himself with the Jamal switch, this time attacking with a lot more space, and with a little bump to the chest, he picks up an offensive foul. The Celtics did have a few good plays where they turned their defense into transition offense going the other way. Playing with a little more pace whenever possible helped them get some points, with this one right here making it a score of 51-50. From here, it was all Denver. It started with the two-man game. Jokic catches it in the middle, and Jalen makes a great read to nearly blow it up, only for the big man to regain possession and turn into a floater. Then on the other end, Boston tries a pick and pop, which the Nuggets defend by putting two on Tatum, while a third defender comes over from the weak side to pick up the shooter. They force yet another turnover, which leads to some transition offense, and Porter throws down a huge dunk. In the half court, it's right back to the two-man game. Jamal turns the corner, and Drew shoots up from the weak side to protect the nail, with nobody covering a lob to Mr. 50. And then when the Nuggets finally miss a shot, Jokic plays a little game of water polo to secure a second chance opportunity before drawing a foul. Derek White tries to respond by attacking before the defense can set, and gets rejected at the rim. And with just a few seconds to go, the ball finds Jokic for a face-up isolation, as they once again beat the buzzer. After closing the quarter on a 10-4 run, it was 61-54 heading into the break. The Celtics opened up quarter number 3 really strong. First, it was one of those pick and pops where Tatum draws 2, except he plays it with a lot more patience to let Porzingis get some space, then when he hits him, there's just no way for KCP to recover. Then on defense, they do a great job of defending the 2-man game. Chris Dapps comes up in a high drop, then when Jamal steps back for a 3, you have Tatum coming over to contest, while everyone crashes the glass. Next time down, it's going to be Jalen who sets up the ball screen, and like clockwork, you've got two on the ball, nobody on Porzingis, as he hits his second three in just a minute. So they go right back to it again. Now the Nuggets play a much softer coverage to not let Chris Dapps get another good look, which leaves Brown with a ton of space to operate. Just like that, we've got a tie game. Not for long though, as the Nuggets immediately responded through the form of Nikola Jokic post-ups, just abusing Chris Stapps on that block. Over and over again, they set Joker up on an open side of the floor and watch him go to work. With no double team, you're not gonna get many stops. Here it is one more time, slowly working his way closer and closer to the basket without seeing a second body. That's just too easy. It wasn't just Jokic though. As a team, they got whatever they wanted in the paint during this quarter. Here you're going to see Gordon take the unicorn one-on-one -on -one and spin into a little hook. And this time it starts with some two-man game between Jokic and KCP. 
Drew makes an effort to dig at the nail, leaving MPJ with an opportunity to cut back door for a layup. So they run it again. Yoka chains it off to KCP, but now nobody steps over to protect the middle, and he's able to get to an elbow jumper. It's the exact same thing when it was Reggie Jackson. He receives the handoff, nobody cuts off his momentum, and he drives into a floater. The Nuggets were starting to build some serious separation again, in large part due to how they defended Tatum. They made it clear that they would send two to the ball every single time he came off a screen, with some aggressive rotations behind the play to take away any easy passes. The goal was to force Tatum into making tough decisions as a playmaker without letting him catch any rhythm as a scorer. Again, there's no angle to attack because he's got two on him, and when he tries to hit Chris Dapps, you've got a third defender jumping that lane. You can see how much different it looks when he's operating one-on-one -on -one with some space, putting his head down and getting to the rim with ease. But that was his only made shot in quarters two and three, and he only got three attempts up in total. The game plan was clear, and forcing Tatum to make tough decisions resulted in him turning the ball over four times in just those 14 minutes. With that said, I don't want it to seem like he didn't make any good plays. Again, he draws two, throws an up fake to sell the defense before hitting Chris Dapps for his third three-pointer of the quarter. Denver's defense was just in the zone though. This time it's Jalen who draws two and looks to hit the pop, but watch KCP as he makes a perfect rotation to force another turnover. With the Nuggets offense rolling, the Celtics struggling to score, this could have gotten out of hand very quickly. They desperately needed a savior, which they found in the form of Jalen Brown. They were setting him up on the elbow for isolations where he's both a threat to drive and to rise up over the top for jumpers. Here it is again. He catches and quickly attacks downhill, which puts the defense in rotation and leads to a high quality corner three for Sam Hauser. As I mentioned earlier though, he's at his best with pace, relentlessly attacking the rim for his 12th points of the third. No matter how well he played though, Denver always had an answer. Jokic gets a mismatch in the middle and demands a double team, leaving KCP open in the corner to keep it a double digit game. And that right there takes us to the end of the quarter, a 90-80 Nuggets lead with just 12 minutes to go. Of course, that means we're right back to the let Jamal cook minutes, and it was a mix of good and bad. On the first possession, he rejects some screening action and creates a wide open path to the cup. Then the next time he rejects a screen, the Celtics are more prepared and do a phenomenal job of protecting the paint. So to make things a little trickier, you're going to see Peyton Watson fake a screen to the right before flipping it left to give Jamal a lane as he snakes back across the middle for one of his tough buckets. It was really a one-man show though. The other guys weren't producing much offensively, so on a play like this where he's doubled and Peyton Watson's left open, they come away empty-handed. On the other side of things, a majority of Boston's offense was flowing through Tatum as an isolationist. This time it's inside the arc and they decide to leave him in single coverage so he's able to get to the rim for two. Then on the next one he sets up on the perimeter, tries his hand at a step back three and misses, but they secure a second chance. The offense resets, Tatum once again isolates from the perimeter, but now he's going to look to drive only for Peyton Watson to fly in for a massive block. You just have to credit this bench unit for their defensive versatility. Tatum couldn't get anything going. Najee on the ball, Watson coming over to protect the rim, that's good stuff. However, I want you to look at who Boston has on the floor. They really tried to take advantage of these non-Jokic minutes by running four of their five starters. The Nuggets still have bodies to throw at Chris Dapps, but that talent gap is just too much to overcome. When Tatum drives and draws help, he's kicking it out to a wide open Jalen Brown. Then after a stop, they get out in transition, and a bucket triggers a timeout to get Jokic back in the game. On the first play back, Jokic immediately finds himself with a mismatch and patiently works his way to the paint to draw a foul. And as for Boston, they get possibly the best shot you could ask for with a Drew Holiday corner three, only he misses, and a quick grab and go leads to a run out on the other end, where Peyton Watson cuts into a driving lane and throws down a big time dunk. From there, both teams went cold, and it's not like they couldn't create good shots, they just weren't dropping. 
Here you're gonna see the Nuggets run a little screening action that forces Porzingis to slide down from the corner, and that's a shot you want 10 out of 10 times, it just doesn't find the net. After nearly two minutes without a score, Kristaps finally breaks the spell with an elbow jumper. And then on defense, the Celtics are trying out an interesting strategy. What they're doing is putting one of their wings on Jokic and switching every action, while Porzingis roams from the weak side corner to protect the paint. This time he picks up Joker, which results in a dump off to Gordon. So you obviously don't want to overhelp, but leaving him in single coverage is just way too easy. I don't really know what the goal is here. With that said though, this Boston team was not rolling over easy. You've got a big time bucket plus the foul from Jalen in transition, and then a cross match leaves Jokic on Drew Holiday, which he uses to his advantage by attacking downhill. A possession later, it's Porzingis who has Jokic on him, and he too is going to attack on a drive before stopping short for a pull-up jumper. We've got a 5 point game. The Nuggets try to counter by going back to an open side post up for Joker, and when the Celtics double, the ball finds KCP in the corner. Again, you can't ask for a better shot, but Boston catches a break. Now they have a chance to make it a one possession game, and Chris Stapps tries a three of his own with the same result on a miss. From there, it was pretty back and forth. You've got Jokic posting up on an open side and spinning into a hook that misses, only for Gordon to fly in and put it back. Then on the other end, it's a Tatum pick and roll that draws two, except instead of giving the ball up, he forces the issue himself and drives his way into a pair of free throws. A possession later, Drew attacks in early offense, gets cross-matched with Jokic, and steps back for a jumper, cutting the lead down to three. I bet you can guess what Denver goes to. Joker on an open side working with his back to the basket, and no second defender coming over to save their defense from the inevitable. The Nuggets just couldn't put it away though. Drew once again finds himself with the Jokic switch, steps back for another three, and now it's a two point game. Then while milking the clock, Jalen picks Jamal's pocket, leading to some fast break offense. The execution here by Boston is just perfect, and they end up with a wide open corner three from their best player. That's about as good of an opportunity as you'll get. Still, there's some time left to get a stop, and they desperately need it. This is when Jokic pulls out Old Faithful, spinning into a fake hook shot that's actually a lob to Gordon. With one last chance to keep the game alive, it's Derek White who attempts a three, and it doesn't drop. After that, it's just theatrics, and the Nuggets end up defending their home court with a six-point win. Real quick, I want to revisit a few moments from the closing minutes of this game though, because many expect these two to meet again in the NBA Finals, and I think we learned a lot down the stretch. Just think about all of the pivotal swing moments for the Celtics. On their first chance to make it a one possession game, Chris Stapps missed a three. Then the shot that made it a one possession game was a Drew step back three. Same thing to bring it within two, a Drew step back three. With a chance to take their first lead in seemingly forever, you guessed it, a missed three. And on the very last opportunity to keep the game alive, I think you get the idea. Now let's think about how the Nuggets closed the game to hold the lead. Aaron Gordon put back, Jokic post up bucket, and a Jokic lob to Gordon. Are you sensing a theme? Because I know I am. The Nuggets relied on the painted area for their scoring, while the Celtics relied on the three point line, and it's a stylistic difference that gives these two teams such a different level of variability in performance. What I mean by that is the Celtics' use of the three-point line with the level of talent they have gives them an offensive ceiling matched by very few teams in NBA history. That's why they're the number one offense and a big reason for the 48-14 and 14 record. But it also gives them a much lower floor. If they go cold at the wrong time, things don't look so good, and you end up with a game like last night where they shot 11 of 38, or 29% from 3. On the other side, the Nuggets shot just 19% from 3. A disaster. But the difference is volume. They only took 21 threes, 17 less than Boston. That's why they still produced a 116 offensive rating, and why as a team their floor is so high. 
because they're so good at controlling the paint and don't rely on hot or cold shooting, there's a level of inevitability in their offense that helped them steamroll the playoffs last year. So do with that information as you wish. If the Celtics get hot, they look unbeatable. But is that ceiling enough to make them a title favorite over a team like Denver who's just always good? Well, the playoffs are rapidly approaching, so only time will tell. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you thought of this matchup. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.